in this video, part three, we're going to be testing some senders and see what the difference is and see how accurate they really are. Right, I hope you can see this little setup we've got here. Let me explain it. We've got a battery here. The black wire goes to ground on the body of all this lot here. So that's representing your car. We've got the sender or the, the, the switch here. And then we go, it doesn't matter which way around these are because it's an LED, but we've got this little wire goes through this LED here, up here, to the battery. It's a simple, just a very simple circuit. So positive is coming down this wire here and it's finding a ground because this is a normally closed switch. The gauge is 0 to 100, uh, no, wait a minute, it's 0 to 15 psi, so we're in a very small scale, or 0 to 100 kilopascals. I thought round trees made fruit pascals, but I could be mistaken. This is a reducer. Um, to reduce the airflow. So what we're going to do is just turn this a little bit. There we go. What's that? That's not come on yet. Now six. it's supposed to come on 6 to 9 psi. Let's have a zoom so you can see that properly. There you go. 6 to 9. There. 6.5. You see the light go out? See it comes on, on and off? You can see how much I'm regulating the pressure, it's not much. And of course, after that pressure the light goes out and you're alright, you've got oil pressure. But under that, under that range there, <coughs> the oil light will be on. Alright, so that's low oil pressure. Now I've got a box of various uh, oil pressure switches here and I'm going to test them. Now the only ones I can't test are these uh, old series types here because I haven't got the right thread adapter for them. Um, neither are these ones here. These are the wrong thread as well. Now I did find, so I've got actually only got two, but I did find on my shelf another switch here, a brand new one in a bag and a box. There. Now I found, I did a bit of research about these things here. And I found out the original manufacturer is Facet in Italy. They make them. And they make them up to, uh, just to make three different versions of them. Um, I'll write below what the, uh, the, pr the pressures actually are. And uh, you'll see, but let's, let's test this one. Looks interesting, doesn't it? Let me get set up for that. Right, this is uh, another one. This is the blue one in a brick pack box made in China. Uh, let's see what this one does. You can see the lights on, the circuits working. Here we're coming up. There's six. And it's gone out at six, look. Exactly on six. That's good. So the range is supposed to be six to seven, but you can see this one went off at a, no, this one. This one went off at a higher pressure. Let's do another one. Right, here's another one. You can see the lights on. <laughs> Nobody's at home. Pressure coming up. Six. That's seven. Seven PSI. That's good. Still in the range. Right, here's another one. Now this actually does look like a facet one when I was looking in the uh, in the manual this morning, like on the online manual, it does look like a facet one and it is stamped underneath. So let's put some pressure into that. Uh, it should be 69, I said 79, 69. 7. Oh, look at this. Look at this. That's on nine, look. Nine. Nine, nine. Look at that. So what a difference, eh? What a difference. We've got three pounds difference. Same, same switch. 
Isn't that interesting? So what I'm going to do now, because <laughs> I don't want to waste any more of my time, I'm going to um, go and fit this T-piece onto my Isuzu and get the gauge working using all the bits and pieces and see what happens. Could be interesting because like I say I'm going to put that £9 gauge on in place of the one that's existing and see what happens. Back soon. Right so I've got my uh, pressure adapter in you can't quite see it. it's right down here that's in and there's the pipe and there's my pipe for my turbo pressure thing and I've wrapped it in some plastic wrap and tied it to that pipe so it's not all rattling around so let's go and have a look at the inside so here we are in the car I finally got this one uh, piped in I actually did bleed the pipe through so I started the car and ran it till oil was got right up to the gauge because you don't really want air in it because it won't give you a very good reading so what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a cold start, it's 15 degrees today and see what it goes like. Nothing yet. There we go. So, that's cold oil pressure, 60. Not too bad. Turn the revs down a bit. So 50 cold idle. Now it seems to be that 60 tell it's cold because the car's the engine always stutters when it's cold. So 60. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to take it for a, a drive and see what it's like. But obviously, before with the old uh, sender in, when the sender was flashing. Um, it was a seven pound sender so obviously it was a sender that was faulty so always check the senders I'll take it for a run and we'll see what it's like so after a run the temperature is up to normal um, I've noticed a couple of things I've got to sort out I didn't realize before now this is idling just normally and it's on about 10 pound pressure is all right because it's got a seven pound oil light on. But I've noticed here what's happening is what we can kill two birds one stone here. Look at idle it's charging at uh, 14 and a half volts. I picked the speed up a bit. Watch what happens to the radio. Fine. Now it didn't do that before so obviously there's something wrong with the alternator. It's not, if it's not one thing, it's your mother. Right, I think we're alright for oil pressure though. 